What's up designers and welcome back to Remton Games. Today is the first in a new series on this channel called the TCG Design Academy. Trading card games are a genre that's near and dear to my heart, but they're also one of the most difficult types of tabletop games to design. Right up there with legacy games and tabletop RPGs. In this series, I'm going to be looking at the design of these games, the many design challenges that come with them, and examining the solutions that different games have come up with. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at one of the most fundamental pitfalls in TCG design, the Queen's Problem. This is a chessboard. You already knew that because chess is one of the most popular games in the world, has been around for hundreds of years, and you saw The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. It's mostly about my being a girl. But what if I told you that I could make chess even better? Introducing Super Chess. It's just like normal chess, but instead of every player having the same pieces and the same arrangement on the board every single time, Every player has a different set of pieces and they can arrange them however they want. You want an entire row of bishops? Go for it. What about alternating squares of knights and rooks? Knock yourself out. Every game will be unique because every player will have their own personal unique arrangement of queens. They'll pick 15 queens and a king and maybe throw a few knights in there. Why? Because the queen is clearly the most powerful piece. It can do basically anything every other piece can do, and a single queen can control nearly half the board all by herself. Rooks, bishops, and especially pawns would be completely obsolete in this new game. Does giving players the power to make their own chess setups make the game better? Absolutely not. Rather than adding more variety to the game, it would actually make it less unique, as players will only be using one or maybe two different types of pieces along with the obligatory king. But wait! I thought this video was supposed to be about trading cards. Why am I talking about chess? Great question! It turns out this same problem actually occurs in trading card games as well. One of the greatest strengths of trading card games is their variety. Every player has a unique deck, and the decks are randomly shuffled so that no two games are ever exactly the same. However, this doesn't happen by accident. If you aren't careful when designing the rules of your game, you can easily run into a situation where everyone just puts all the same good cards into their decks. The rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! were absolutely not designed with the Queen's problem in mind. There's nothing in the rules that stops players from taking all of the best cards and just shoving them into the same deck. This was a huge problem, especially in the early days when players would all include the same sets of super powerful cards. Pot of Greed, Monster Reborn, Raigeki, Change of Heart, Harpy's Feather Duster, the original Chaos Monsters. This created tons of problems for the game, and the rules didn't have any way of handling it. Yu-Gi-Oh! ended up simply banning all of those cards, and since then has been playing a constant game of whack-a-mole slapping down new cards whenever they become too powerful. This is also a huge problem for the players. When everyone wants the same cards, it causes the price of those cards to skyrocket, and it's not unusual for a single card to sell for hundreds of dollars. Then that card ends up inevitably getting banned, and those hundreds of dollars end up wasted. Fortunately, the Queen's problem is not inevitable, and there are many ways to design around it. The most common way is by having some form of built-in restriction about which cards can go in which decks. Magic the Gathering does this through their mana system. Different cards require different types of mana to play, and while you can still technically put cards of all different colors in the same deck, the more different colors you have, the harder it becomes to actually cast any of your cards. Pokemon does something similar with their energy cards. You can play any Pokemon you want, but they require specific types of energy to use their abilities, so you want to limit how many different types of energy you require in your deck. Finally, games like Hearthstone and Gwent simply have players choose a category of deck, and each deck's only allowed to include cards from that category. While putting these kinds of limits on your game may seem like they're stifling the player's creativity, it's actually the exact opposite. By limiting players to only using a subset of the available cards, 
the amount and variety of different decks will dramatically increase. The different categories of deck also usually have a sort of rock-paper-scissors relationship to one another where certain decks have an advantage over certain other kinds. This can prevent any individual deck from becoming too dominant as there are built-in checks and balances. A second way to keep the queen's problem in check is to have some form of cost system to play your cards. Playing a more powerful card may require more time, cards, life points, mana, or some other resource in order to play. This helps reduce the urge to fill your deck with only the most powerful cards because you might not have enough of these limited resources to play them all. One solution that absolutely does not work is rarity. One of the ways early magic tried to solve the queen's problem was by putting the most powerful cards at rare. Sure, drawing three cards for one blue mana is insanely busted, but it's not as big of a deal if a player only has one copy because it's so rare, and what are the odds that players are going to buy enough packs to get multiple copies of a single rare card? Turns out, the odds are 100%. Trying to limit the power of certain cards by making them rare and difficult to get is absolutely not a solution. All it does is drive up the price for those players who will stop at nothing to fill their decks with the most powerful cards. Just ask Seto Kaiba and his three Blue Eyes White Dragons. Thank you so much for watching this new series. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss future entries in the series. I'm still working on scheduling new episodes of Trivia Arena, so hopefully I'll be able to put something together for that in the near future. And join me next time for a Pokemon redesign video. Make sure to leave your ideas for Pokemon that I should redesign and how in the comments down below. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.